And surprise! Hello and welcome everyone to the Comic Multiverse, where the worlds of nerd meet. If you don't watch this show live, everyone, with me and Matt on Sunday when we record this, Matt has set up a very cool loading bar that you see sometimes, but we surprised you. We started early, kinda. Kinda, sorta. I just looked at the clock, I'm like, oh, well, technically it's 10.03, so we didn't start right when we usually do. Oh, well. <laughs> But yeah, we got at least 16 people in the chat right now. Thank you, everyone, for coming and joining us. We got a lot of our regulars here, Jaden and Tevia and Michaelis and Mr. Elmo X and Winford. You know, a lot of, a lot of names we recognize. So uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for spending your Sunday night with us they all in are, quarantine. They're all here, yeah. I also just realized, Matt, that, you know, you uh, changed the font color for this episode, and it looks like that I actually matched my clothes. I've been doing that for the, the last two oh, episodes. <laughs> That's very funny. We we don't talk about this, everyone. This is completely... Our minds have just melded 191 episodes in. <laughs> Can you believe it's 191 episodes? We're going to have to start planning something crazy for episode 200, aren't we? Yeah, we thought of some things, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Hey, hey, fans, in the comment section down below, when you watch this uh, later on YouTube, uh, what's some crazy shit you would like to see us do for episode 200? Take take the guest work out of our job for us and just tell you what you want. <laughs> <laughs> and like and like the good single parents that we are, we will try and get you that thing, but also keep your expectations low because we're we're just trying. We're just trying so hard. <laughs> Oh, so I see the chat said Dark Phoenix. Get out of here with that. <laughs> I, I've started something that's not going to stop now until we do it. You've, cre you've created a monster, Matt. Also, we've uh, we've talked about what we are going to do for uh, for our next commentary. It's going to be Ant-Man, and that's because one of our uh, toppest, tierest uh, patrons asked for it. Yeah. I just remembered, oh yeah, that's a stretch goal I had for my Patreon, is that uh, I was going to uh, let them pick one, and that's the one that he picked. So that's the one we're going to do next. Awesome. Yeah. People saying Endgame and Shazam. I know we did Shazam at Christmas. Have we not done Endgame yet? No, we've done Infinity War, which we had Tom on oh, for. Right. right. That was good. Yeah, I like getting Tom on for things. That's fun. It's hard It's hard to schedule, obviously, because we got three different time zones we need to juggle. But yeah, it's always always a pleasure having him back on. Definitely. Always nice to talk about him. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Tom, his friend Tom Carter talked to me too. Uh, his, uh, his book he's working on uh what is it is uh getting further along now and you can actually get that now oh also, oh yeah yes yes he's uh he's a comic book yes yes here i have i have the whole thing uh guardian issue number one you can uh get that all over the place now i'll link that down in the description for you he he didn't pay for a plug i'm just doing it because <laughs> i know him and everything <laughs> He he got the friend price on this one. For every other thing there, it's just like no, Joel, Joel Joel's got to make his money somewhere because <laughs> he because he ain't making it other places. Not nope. <laughs> no, thank uh, thank fuck for Harley Quinn and everything else uh, in this time. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Because those uh, those digital comics, I'm sure you would agree, viewership just hit a point where they're like, yeah, we don't need no more of these. Yeah, yeah. It, it, after like the the fourth or fifth issue, fifth issue, they're like, okay, bring back real comics. In fact, that like I look back at like the few real comics we have gotten throughout the months, and I'm like, yeah, they're uh -huh. doing so much better. They are. It went from like, oh, thank God, comic content to like, yeah, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> we don't we don't need none of this shit. We got we got unkillables. Damn it. <laughs> Which, speaking of Unkillables, how good was Unkillables this week? Yeah, that was really cool. I, I enjoyed it. I did found, find the Mary Marvel uh, reveal a little just kind of out of left field. Yeah. But, I, but it was cool. I, it, it didn't bother me because it was cool. It's got, like, the rule of cool thing for it. And it's like, well, someone has to save them from this situation. Yeah. And who's it going to be? Yeah. And again, she she was actively hiding. She was so good at hiding, she hid from us the reader. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, it, it, it got interesting, too, because it's like, yo, hey, you like this deceased universe? Well, guess what? Even before the third one comes out, it's getting even bigger because we're stealth releasing a, a what is it? A freaking uh, digital series. A weekly as well. digital series, which is, I think, 14 issues or something. Something insane. Yeah, still written by Tom King. The first issue was all about Jimmy Olsen. And, oh, hey, thank you, Mr. Patterson, for subscribing. Cheers. Hey, cha cha ching. Uh, yeah, that was all about Jimmy Olsen, who by the end of the story becomes punished Jimmy Olsen. <laughs> I like that he is like, 
like a little bit more hard edge but he still has that hopeful nature mm. in him where his whole deal is he's 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 continuing to be a photographer because people need to see these heroes in actions now more than ever most most definitely and uh, it's also kind of a primer too where it's like hey do you want to read this but didn't really uh read uh deceased well here you go also yes i meant tom taylor tom king was on the tip of my tongue anyway <laughs> As the chat is quick to remind me when I fuck up. Yes, everyone, I know I fucked up. I caught it. <laughs> I, I appreciate you there like the good helicopter parents you are, smacking my knuckles when I done wrong. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the deceased is cool. I like this idea, too, where it's like, yeah, yeah, every issue of this digital series can focus on another character who didn't get the spotlight, either in Unkillables or in the main deceased. Exactly, yeah. It's all all, like, interesting characters who you don't really get to see play in these big events. Yeah, who, who are some weird side characters you would like to see? What were they doing when? I'm trying to think of the ones we've had so far. All of them have been pretty much the ones I've wanted to see. We haven't seen Rachel Ghoul yet, I don't think, in the League of Assassins. That would be a fun one. Uh, wasn't he in, a kill, in Unkillables or, or that? No, he was in that other one. Remember, he had that island. He was no, a, that was Vandal Savage. Oh, yes, that was, they looked exactly the same. That's right. It's true. They looked a lot. Of, yeah, Animal Man. That's another good mm. one. Yeah, characters like that. What are they doing? All of this. Animal Man the would be interesting, animals. considering that like Earth is now like dead. <laughs> yeah, maybe and his maybe connection. he is in Dead Planet. Yes, his connection to the red and everything. Also, animals didn't turn into monsters, did they? It was just regular people who became blighted ones. I don't think we saw. I, I'd have to assume that they would if they saw a screen or something. Mm, here's hoping the doggies don't look at the screen <laughs> crypto Cri i know crypto is coming oh. up <laughs> yes we saw crypto in one of jimmy's pictures so there you go and uh we're glad you're here ultimate dark slayer we're glad you caught us in time as well yeah yes yeah, so there's just a little taste of the comics uh we had this week because yeah we had some new comics this week and we're gonna have some new comics this week too yeah they we're, we're fastly approaching that date where marvel has decided they'll release like what one third of their books so yeah, yeah all in one go <laughs> gotta gotta get on empire i was so stoked for empire and then they're like nah cool off yeah they, they, that i think that's really hurt that brand as well as maybe death metal as well it's really hurt them because mm. we we would be right in that at the moment whereas now we've got to wait a little bit while so hype is starting to sort of cool down i haven't seen anyone really talk about empire either no no well because it's like i think like people a lot of people weren't even on board for empire because they're like Ugh, another big cosmic event it's like yeah but it's al ewing though it'll be different and fun and yes it's about hulkling and i know not everybody loves hulkling but you know this should be fun and then they gave like that little hey here's the primer of the kree scroll war and i'm like oh this was a really fun one shot mm -hmm. this has got me excited there's places they could take it and then as soon as that was done ah, cool the fuck off yeah yeah <laughs> I've, i still haven't read that that one shot i'm kind of keeping it until we're closer so it'll help build a little bit more hype for my videos yeah you should check it out uh what else have you been up to this week matt anything in particular uh not really anything i, I finished i saw you started playing assassin's creed origins and i'm very much close yes. to finishing it Here's the funny thing. I popped Assassin's Creed Origins back in, and I'm like, oh, I was past the halfway point in this the last oh, time I really? played it, but never actually. Yes, I'm I am in the final chapter of it now. And as I sit and play it, I'm like, wow, they killed two more children in this story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that game just kills children left, right, and center. And there's a point there. I'm like, okay, look, they kill his son in the beginning to, you know, like start off his hero's journey. That happens all the time. They can't possibly kill another child. Oh no, they do. Then they kill another like young teenage boy. And I'm like, they won't possibly do that. And they did. <laughs> That's the, 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 that cult's whole thing. Yeah. They, they love killing children or being around the murder of children. It's a hell of a thing. Also, man, I forgot too. Bayek and his wife. I am like, oh yeah, you guys were actually good, likable characters in a series that struggles with that sometimes. Right? They they were really, really likable. I really enjoyed getting to know their their story and getting to play as both of them. 
Absolutely, because, you know, in, like, the Assassin's Creed series, and again, just a tangent, folks, on something that Matt and I are both weirdly knowledgeable about, uh, it's like for every Ezio Auditore who's so cool he gets, like, three games to himself, you get, like, a Connor, where it's like, oh, I don't even remember that guy exactly. No, yeah, so it it was really good to have those characters come back, and it makes as well, like, because you get so invested in them throughout the story, it makes what happens near the end of the game, like, that much more impactful, where they sort of split up and... You, you see the you know origin of the though. assassins yeah exactly which is funny when it actually i just got to that point right now where they're like yes our brotherhood and i'm like oh yeah that's right this is an assassin's creed origin <laughs> story isn't it i did i the one part i didn't like is um how they can't come up with that that assassins logo i thought that was kind of like crappy have you gotten to that part yet I think I'll be going to that uh, soon. I'm like right near the end of the game. I just killed because it's funny. They're like, oh, here's the five people you have to kill. Then you kill them. OK, well, here's like two more you have to kill and one more secret guy who will throw at you in quick succession. Yeah. Yeah. The end kind of like just kind of ramps up a little bit too quickly for me. And then it's like, oh, you know, Caesar's your buddy and everything. And Cleopatra's your buddy. I'm like, well, historically, they weren't anyone's <laughs> friends. Ah, yeah, here we go. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's very obvious. They're not your friends. <laughs> Yeah, this uh, this had to happen. And I'm also, too, it's like, hey, didn't Cleopatra have a brother who was, like, killed under mysterious circumstances? Ah, there we go. Yeah, there it is. He was eaten by crocodiles. <laughs> and then I'm like, hey, Caesar in general, isn't he, like, one of the world's most famous assassination victims? Oh, right. <laughs> Man, if they ever do Assassin's Creed World War II, and assumingly it's only a matter of time before they get there, uh, Archduke Franz Ferdinand, is he an assassin or a Templar? What side was he on before he got shot? I think he'll be similar to Cleopatra, where he works both sides. <laughs> oh, damn, you Archduke And, and that's, that's going to be the end. Your, your character is going to be the one who, who shoots him from the crowd, or apparently shoots him from the crowd. <laughs> All right, because they did some shit with Jack the Ripper where it's like, well, mm-hmm. was Jack the Ripper an assassin or a Templar? Well, he was an assassin and the hookers he killed were actually other assassins. And it's a whole big thing. He was trying to wrestle control of the order away. Yeah. Oh, yeah. World War One was uh, Archduke <laughs> Franz Ferdinand. You're right. You know, what? that's better because World War One would actually be better than World War Two because they still had like cannons and shit in World War One. Th- and it wasn't so technologically advanced. Yeah, I yet. think there was a comic as well that was very like close to World War Two assassins it was like a, about a russian uh assassin oh yes yes uh nikolai uh Osta da, 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 who's related to one of those other guys from the modern mm-hmm. assassin's creed story that i stopped giving a shit about a long time ago <laughs> oh they've they've completely like like ditched it in this game oh, yeah. you, like you play as the modern equivalent like maybe three times which again i i've never thought the future stuff has ever been well uh, no. implemented in that series i think it always steals focus and i think the only reason they keep doing it is uh to feed like the multimedia project that is assassin's creed and other stuff in books and comics and mobile games and everything else that's the only reason they keep doing it yeah, yeah it's it's an it's a complete afterthought they come up with this cool game and then they're like oh just make it so this woman can has she built her own animus and can chat, tap into mm. any assassin's mind now which, which is them trying to cover up their own shit. Where it's like, but don't you have to have genetic memory? Isn't that why we needed Desmond? Because it was a whole family line yeah. and everything. It's like... Uh, yeah. <laughs> we've, we've changed that. Man, where are they going to go after uh, Valhalla? I guess they will eventually probably have to do Wild West or Samurais. Because that's like, after you've done Vikings, they've done everything else. Everyone wanted Samurai, but then Ghost of Shishima came out. Mm. And everyone's like, ah, oh, this is exactly what we wanted from Assassin's Creed. But it's not Assassin's Dude. Creed. <laughs> to eat their fucking lunch and be the better samurai assassin's creed i i know they have a chinese assassin and an indian assassin and uh the russian assassin they were in the side scrolly games but they've never been given full games to themselves mm, I, I i wouldn't mind if they just like because these last couple of games have had some pretty fantastical stuff in it um like yes, like in are. origins you fight like Ra and sekhmet and all of that mm. sort of stuff yeah and the DLCs. Um, just 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 go roll with that and say we're going back to when that that race that like this is all based on the isu oh yeah just just yeah, them the first just you fight in the great catastrophe or something i thought you were gonna say go all the way back it's like it's king arthur times and turns <laughs> out excalibur is also like a first civilization relic or well, it would make sense because i think isn't isn't in some of those games there is like swords that are yes like, yeah so it, it writes itself <laughs> <laughs> it, it basically fucking writes itself it's already there 
man, they'd probably never do it because Ubisoft never does like, you know, uh, prickly topics like this. But I would actually like to see uh, let you be a Buffalo soldier during the Civil War. That'd be pretty cool. We've already seen the Revolutionary War. Now it's like, okay, so uh, the Underground Railroad, uh, they were working with the Assassins, right? Because, again, if you played uh, if you played Freedom Cry, the spinoff to Black Flag mm-hmm. where you played as Ottawale, it's like, uh, actually, the Assassins uh, have kind of an unfortunate history when it comes to slavery because the Assassins backed the French, and the French were totally behind the slave trade 100%. <laughs> Which, again, in Rogue, friggin' Shea Patrick Cormack even calls them on that. They're like, that's bullshit that uh, the assassins are such hypocrites like that. Mm, yeah. That would be another really cool thing. Another, like, Templar-centric game. I would be more than okay with that, too. I love Rogue. Rogue might actually be one of my favorites. Just because I love it's just Shea Patrick Cormack just, like, literally riffing on all of the assassins' hypocrisies. <laughs> Also, the assassins you fight in that game are way cooler than the actual assassins from 3. Yeah, yeah, 3 is pretty forgetful. It really is. And, like, I think 3 had one of the best combat systems. Because, like, everything had a... It had one of the best counter kill moves on it. But I cannot tell you anything about what happened in that game. Yeah, I I can barely remember. Which is going to be fun going... Because I got Odyssey as well. And the, the version I got came with... Uh, Assassin's Creed 3 and Liberation, the remasters, so I'm going to go back and play them, and uh, I'll try and remember the story. <laughs> I I also picked that up, because you told me about that deal, so when I'm done Origins, I will also play Odyssey. Yeah. For just that reason, so I can be all ready for Valhalla. So, uh, yeah, everyone, believe it or not, we are a comic book podcast. Thank you for Assassin's Watch, the uh, <laughs> podcast within a podcast, and thank you, Dougley, for following us, even though we were talking pure bollocks. <laughs> so there you go, everyone. Be, be sure to listen next week for more Assassin Talk, <laughs> the podcast within a podcast on the comic multiverse. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so we do actually have a smattering of comic book news. Some fairly big stories, actually, that happened this week that I'm sure will give us plenty to talk about. Oh, yeah, this was a, this was a very strange week in comic book news. Very strange. Very, very much so. And uh, I guess the first big story here, the one that people were already jumping the gun in the chat. <laughs> no, we, no, we weren't going to talk about this, everyone. We were no. just going to let this fly by night, not mention it at all. But uh, the much-touted Snyder Cut of uh, Justice League... Uh, is coming to fruition after all. Uh, th- I like that they didn't call it the Snyder Cut. They're calling it Zack Snyder's Justice League. Yeah, I, that was the funniest thing about the, the the little marketing we got for it. Everyone's like, hmm, I wonder who Justice League movie this is. Because it's like, it's like his name in big letters and then just like in it's small letters. It's bigger than like anything Justice else, League. his name. <laughs> You know, we're not saying Zack Snyder's an egomaniac or anything. We're just saying his name is literally bigger than everything else. (laughs) Which, again, makes me think maybe if you're one of those people who are really into this, it's not because you really care about Justice League. It's because, you know, you have a cult uh, devotation to Zack Snyder. Oh, it's very obvious that that is what about 90% of these people were. And I'm and I'm glad you said that, man. And let us preface this conversation as we move forward. Look, if you if you are the ten percent of people out there who wanted a Snyder cut of Justice League because you know you believe in auteur theory or you wanted to see what or that version of the movie seemed more interesting to you than the one we got, or even if you just want some nice entertainment in these trying times, I can't blame you for that. It's the other ninety percent of assholes who <laughs> ruined it for everyone. We have a problem with the people who pissed and moaned and had a child's temper tantrum for two and a half years until a company finally gave them their way that's what i find kind of disconcerting about this whole thing because yeah it it wasn't just because like fans petitioned and and just like wanted it it was you know you go on any post in the last two years of like wb jeff johns Mm -hmm. any of that and it's just filled with people like shouting abuse at at this company that yeah that was really like these accounts are just run by like interns at, the, at these people yeah. to give them this and they go and do that. Yeah, again, like I said, they were having a prolonged temper tantrum, and yeah, I don't like the precedent this makes, that if you don't like something, just be really horrible on social media for two and a half years and maybe you'll get your way. Worked for Sonic, worked for this, but, and I'm glad that I did the little bit of digging and discover this, the people who ultimately acquiesced to this, the people in charge of uh, HBO, uh, HBO Go or HBO Max, wherever this uh, mm-hmm. new thing is going, 
uh, again, it was, you know, it was a combination of them, new heads of Warner Brothers, and apparently the new heads of AT&T that got involved with this. So this, this was a whole new guard of people that ultimately said yes to this, which makes sense, because if you really pay attention to the DC multimedia things uh, of the old guard now... Harley Quinn called out the Snyder Cut people and made fun of them mercilessly. Mm -hmm. The friggin' Lego movie made fun of them mercilessly. Teen Titans Go! the movie made fun of them. And the whole Zack Snyderization mercilessly. It was an out secret. Nah, this didn't work. Fuck it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you can tell there's like that, that changing of the old guard now with Mm -hmm. AT&T buying them out. Which in classic big mega corporation fashion, where it's like, oh, people really want this thing. They'll pay a lot of money for it, yeah? Oh, yeah, totally. Oh, we have a new app we're trying to sell? Yeah, fire something together. I, you know, I say fire something together, and this is where the story gets even weirder. It's, again, it's not like all the conspiracy theorists out there were thinking, like, oh, there's a better cut of the movie that's being held captive in a vault. No, he no. still needs another year and $20 million to finish it. That's what I found so funny because we got posts from Snyder himself and all these people that say the cut is ready. He, he, there was that famous picture of him uh, posting f- pictures of film canisters that, that, that implied mm-hmm. that the cut is just like sitting in a room somewhere, just, just waiting to be put into screens. Not the yeah. case at all. It still needs, so it technically didn't actually exist because it hasn't been made yet. No. I need another year and $20 million to finish it, which in my mind, I'm like, you know, if I owned HBO Max and I had $20 million, maybe I'd give that to someone else to make a show and not finish something that already lost at the box office that cost us $300 million to make originally. And not only that, like, 20 million isn't going to go far on on a film like this. No. Like a big effects driven thing? God no. Like what 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 what's he going to do with that 20 million? <laughs> And then, like, it gets even weirder in interviews where he's like, oh, it's, uh, you know, I kind of feel like it's a new thing now. Well, how can it be a new thing now if you're finishing an old thing you didn't get to do? I mean, I I get it where this movie, it can't be what it was supposed to be. And that is, oh, it'll set up the next DC films Mm -hmm. and probably a sequel because in his version wasn't Justice League going to be split into two parts. You can't do that anymore. So what are you going to do with this? Are you going to keep those hooks in for sequels that aren't going to happen now and a sequel that isn't going to happen now? What, what is even? And that and that's the thing that comes back into the money. Like, so, so he can't obviously do those things anymore. So that would mean he would need to shoot more things or like do it so that certain scenes are changed, which means reshooting, making sets and everything, which... I don't think he'll be doing because I don't think any of the cast will be coming back, at least in no, costumes, especially no, Ben busy, Affleck. Right? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're busy. Some of them went off to rehab and everything. Like, he can't possibly be getting them back. Then again, the actors do seem like also weirdly devoted to him as well. And they were all tweeting about it and everything, too, even when everyone else was like, get off this, move on. Please do something else. It was probably just a, what is it, a... um not a marketing tactic but like i know henry cavill did something similar to that to sort of try and get his get a new superman movie made like he was holding out or something right 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 right. also too we assume these celebrities run their own twitter feeds when like that's probably 100 percent not true oh no it'll be an assistant or something i have a social media guy for this and they did it for me in my name yeah because it would get them hits or something or something or like oh you know this is this is tracking good the algorithm tells us yeah but this it's very weird too that this will be coming out in 2021 which is the same time we're supposed to be getting a bunch of new dc stuff anyway in this new continuity they're trying like suicide squad comes out that year i think black adam comes out that year too yeah yeah and uh as well as um is batman coming out this year or did that get pushed back i know it's it's, it might have gotten pushed back it's yeah. hard to tell now yeah so the, it, there's not just that as well as like the tv shows and stuff like that so yeah it's 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 very strange that people seem to think that this is gonna like continue after this like this this isn't canon or anything <laughs> to the it, dc it movies like, <laughs> like just from a marketing standpoint it's like well aren't you guys afraid this is gonna muddy the waters or something that you're coming out with this new version of this movie so close to all this other stuff you're doing when you're usually normally so afraid of confusing people (laughs) yeah it's it's very strange very strange unless this unless this is them just putting their foot down and being like no the app's the app the movie or the movies i guess so yeah 
yeah, don't don't get it twisted, but I know you'll get it twisted. Yeah, it will be funny though if they say that that like oh well, Zack Snyder's stuff will like if this is successful he gets to do like more stuff. That'll be like app exclusive. Mm. It'll be funny for the people who right. keep decrying that oh his movies need to be seen on the big screen and mm. or that how they'll suddenly change and be like, No, it's it's definitely good for the app. You, you mean those people who smashed their DVDs? That's what did my head. It's like, wait, you wanted his cut. You didn't like this movie, but you bought the DVDs and are now destroying the DVDs so you can go and buy an app and see that. The, okay, your money. You you do you. Yes, the, these are the same people that like decry consumerism and, and uh, all of yes. that sort of stuff. But yeah, that that was hilarious. They, I'm sure, you know, WB are, are very, very upset that they, they have your money and you're destroying their, 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 their product. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a hell of a thing too. And again, you know, as I said, I, I I don't like I don't want this story. Even though I know some people are happy for it, to send the wrong message, and that is if if you act like a toddler, if you just have a temper tantrum when you don't get your candy, eventually Hollywood will have to acquiesce and give you your candy. But also too, it's just like I I don't know. I I feel many ways about this. Am I gonna see it? Yeah, probably. Which as I was saying, I I was considering like when it eventually does uh show up may, maybe doing like a stream about it or something we should make it like a whole comic multiverse episode about it i mean, yeah i mean people are probably going to want to see it and that'll probably do really good hits so i mean you know <laughs> e- even if i don't agree with a lot of the tactics or the creative choices i mean it should probably be good for me in the long run <laughs> i i i'd I let this also be a lesson to you know any movement no matter how well-intentioned or unintentioned online often becomes so much more than the movement itself. It so often gets, you know, hijacked by bad actors. Mm-hmm. And I think the release the Snyder Cut movement is a perfect example of being hijacked by bad actors. I believe I, comp- I compared it to, like, the birther movement of uh, geek media, although perhaps I think uh, a more apt comparison would be the flat earth movement. And that is, like, <laughs> do you... Do you really believe that Zack Snyder's Justice League would be a good movie, or do you believe in, like, several other adjacent conspiracy theories, and this is just a nice cloak to wrap yourself in so you don't seem too crazy? That's the thing, yeah, they'll say, oh, it's about this, but then the other people will be like, well, you know, Jeff Johns, like, secretly took the script to Marvel, and that's why we got Civil War. (laughs) For every one of them, there's, like, ten of them. (laughs) You see, Kathleen Kennedy snuck in in the night and, you know, sprinkled, uh, what is it, her evil fairy dust mm-hmm. on the movie and destroyed it yeah. for Star or something. And it's like, you know, and the lizard people that secretly run Disney and are making the frogs gay because of Marvel movies and only Zack Snyder knew the truth and would be able to help us. And you would only know it if you watched his cut of Justice League. Yeah, and Jeff Johns wanted to ruin him because he wanted to make it like the comic books. And we can't have that like the comic books because these movies are not for children. Or, or any other equally insane conspiracy theory that went along with this that again distracted from the work and distracted from the movie and as i said before if you're one of those 10 percent of people who you know acted right and acted like a good human being we're not talking about you we're addressing the other people in the room right now yeah we're talking about the the people you also uh, disassociate from exactly <laughs> to uh to to quote our mutual friend kirk there who uh who he, he went a little harder in the paint but i must admit his thing made me laugh there where he's like wait a minute so these people waged basically a terror campaign for years and wouldn't let anyone else talk about anything they were promoting for the dc universe or anything else and now i'm expected to pay money for hbo go to watch it yeah that kind of feels like i'm supporting an evil cause on this one i don't want to do that i mean it, it, it's absolutely true they would absolutely just like for the last three years just bully people off social media yeah yeah what's that thing you can't uh, you can't support this kind of behavior again when a child misbehaves you can't you gotta you gotta no sell it you gotta no sell (laughs) it but again such as late period capitalism such as at&t they're like hey there's money to be made off this man yeah yeah again it's an investment into the app not the actual like universe universe and content and all that they don't give a shit about that this is like look at all this money we're throwing at this app isn't it fucking cool gotta gotta stack that paper 
Got yeah. attack, stack the, it high. The the other thing as well with this is, um, of course, David Ayer was quickly to try and worm his way in to oh, get his. Did yes. you see those fucking edgy? I did fucking society posts. He was posting. Oh my god! I did, and I'm like, David, you're better than this. You made really good adult crime movies. What are you doing? And again, that's the other weird thing too. No, no one came to David Ayer's defense, and they're like, oh, we want to see his version of Suicide Squad. Which again, make no mistake, his Suicide Squad also. Also got cut to ribbons in editing they literally got a fucking trailer house to chop that one to pieces and that was not the movie he intended but no no one's coming a or side oh they are now because they they these people won so they've got the snyder cut so now they're moving on to the a cut because more edgy joker is gonna make that movie so much better yes yes you won you definitely won you won the right to pay a company <laughs> money for more things <laughs> What's, what, what was that bit from uh, from Rick and Morty a couple weeks ago back where he's like, you did good, Morty, you bought things, <laughs> and that's all that matters, Morty. Yep. <laughs> you fucking bought things. The company they've hated for three years, they suddenly like, and will buy everything. Yeah, they suddenly. <laughs> it's shocking how things work, am I right? <laughs> So there, there's your Snyder news, everyone. There, I I hope most of you are happy, and I think some of you will be happy. But again, let's let's not make this the status quo going forward. Let's all try and be a little better than this. Yeah, yeah. Let, let, let let's leave it alone. But I'm I'm just happy that it is happening because it just means for a couple more years, we get more cringe. Mm. Also, isn't Snyder supposed to be working on another movie right now? That's what I've been saying this whole time. He 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 just did that. Um, he did a Netflix. Uh, like it's like a sequel, not sequel to Dawn of the Dead. Um, oh really? And he he's filmed it and everything, so he should be like kind of promoting that and like sort of dealing with that. But it turns out he doesn't seem to really give a shit about it. So what does that say about that film? <laughs> It's, it's weird that, like, I can understand fans getting hung up on stuff. Fans, we are obsessive people by our nature. It's what we do. I will wear that badge on my chest. I am obsessive. Mm-hmm. But for, like, a filmmaker to be this obsessive as well about a thing? Yeah, it's it's very strange. And it's, it, as well, it, he never even came out and said, like, look, I know there's, like, a part of this fandom that is, like actively bullying these people and he never told them to stop or anything in in fact he kind no. of goaded it on no yeah that's totally the case and he he did it from not twitter yeah from his his billionaire friends not twitter app yeah, exactly yeah from his from his ivory tower of barrow yes he's safe space <laughs> There you go. This is a fucking thing. It's like, hey, I I didn't see any bullying from where I was. <laughs> no, really, I don't. What's going on on Twitter? I don't know. <laughs> oh, you know he has a burner account. <laughs> Schmack Schmider. <laughs> it's just him with a, one of those fake glasses. Yeah, yeah, mustache. <laughs> I, like, I wonder, do, do you think he sees this as, like, a big creative failure? Is that why he's, like, so gung-ho about trying to finish this and trying to, like, make it his vision? Because he didn't, from what I understand, uh, like, Sucker Punch was similarly cut to pieces as well and was not the movie he wanted and was not what he envisioned, yet he does not seem to have that same weirdo attachment to Sucker Punch. Yeah, it's it's a weird hill to die on, especially because, like, this isn't... I could understand if this was, like, oh, this is a first in, in Hollywood. Nothing like this has ever happened to a director before, mm-hmm. but it's happened since the dawn of time, the dawn of cinema, you know, stuff like yeah. this has happened. So it's it's very strange that he would get hung up on this. And like you said, Sucker Punch was relatively the same situation. Yeah, like he wanted it to be like a big musical or something, but they couldn't get the rights at the last minute, and so they had to change around. Heck, I would weirdly have more respect if Sucker Punch was what he was hung up on. It's like, no, this would have been my masterpiece, mm-hmm. my magnum opus, but the Hollywood system wasn't ready for it, and they, you know, they didn't, uh, they didn't respect my cut, and you know, I, I still had stories to tell. I would weirdly enough respect that more because at least you know that was all like his original ideas yeah. and everything. Here, it's like, look. If you would do a good superhero story, if you do a bad superhero story, it doesn't matter because these characters have been around for 75 years and there's going to be more and they're going to keep rebooting them because such is Hollywood and such is the nature of the beast. All all will be lost like tears in the rain soon, Zach. Yeah, it's like he wants his, his version of these films to be like the definitive version of these characters and yeah. he's upset that that's not the case. 
I guess. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's very, it's very strange. And I would very much, I would very much like a George Lucas style documentary about the makings of these. Cause you know, he is, as we said, he's not on uh, Twitter. He's on Vero. He's a very guarded human being. He is. Yeah. It, and it would be very interesting to see what he thinks of these, of the, this fandom, like, like an unfiltered yeah. sort of uh, uh, comment from him. But I, I don't think we'll be ever getting one. No, we, we may have gone too far in a couple places. <laughs> We may have gone too far in a couple places. So, yeah, stay stay tuned, everyone, as this story evolves, because I'm sure it will. It definitely. Uh, all right. So what else do we got going on this week? Ooh, keeping on the DC front here, it was a big week for DC across the board. This, this news was genuinely shocking to me, Matt. I did oh, not yeah. see this one coming. In fact, I would dare say this is unprecedented for the CW superhero universe, and that is because Ruby Rose announced this week that she will be quitting Batwoman before season two. Yeah, th- this kind of came out of nowhere, and it's funny because it actually I actually saw this not long after I finished the first uh, the final episode of season yeah. one, um, which is I, when I was about when to get news, started this week, which is when the news actually like aired like like a couple of hours after that that season finale. Um, yeah, th- this is really really quite shocking. Yeah, no official reason has been given yet as to why. Uh, a lot of people have theorized that, you know, she, because, you know, she didn't just act in the show, she did her own stunts too. She suffered a nasty injury while filming. She her her she and her camp claim that, no, that's not the reason. But as it stands right now, that's the only reason people can really jump to. I think it, it's a combination of that and... Because originally when the show was was uh, picked up by the network, it was going to be, I think, 12 or 16 episodes, and they bumped it up and to 22, to which, right. um, you know, her, for her to do this on a weekly basis, like, that's probably pretty intensive. I mean, Stephen Amell did it for, what, eight years or something? Yeah, and and, it, it, uh, and according to, like, his stuff he said on podcasts, is it, like, fucking broke him. Yeah, yeah, that, like, he didn't want to live in Vancouver anymore, he wanted to go back to L.A., and also, too, Rose is in a unique position as opposed to Grant Gustin or Amel, who had really only done television at that point, and they were TV people. She's She's been in movies mm-hmm. and everything, and, you know, like, her, her star is kind of still continuing to rise, and I'm sure at, like, a 12-issue or 12-episode order, she's like, oh, well, I can do this and still do movies. I'm sure it came a point where it's like, well, you can keep trying to do movies, or just take this steady TV gig. You can't do both. Yeah, it was probably something she had to weigh up. Maybe, maybe she's gotten like offers that she because I know Grant Gustin has gotten had gotten like movie offers and other offers, and he had to have mm. said no to them because of the show. So maybe it's something yeah. like that. She didn't want to limit herself. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, it's a hell of a thing. I would say this is probably the most unprecedented shakeup for the CW universe because they've they've recasted here and there but it was always minor mm-hmm. characters they've had actors come and go but it was nothing they couldn't handle this this is the loss of a star and a star that they built the show around mm-hmm. and also like a big thing too that they got to hang up and say like hey here is a very prominent lesbian hero that we cast a real lesbian to play at which we kind of needed to do because we have a lot of straight women playing gay women in other shows mm-hmm. yep yeah. <laughs> So this was this was big for us to finally get that, and I really uh, I'm I'm glad I mentioned that too. I really I really hope it doesn't come out later that oh no I left because people were being homophobic to me, or I left because you know of like sexual assault or something. I really hope it doesn't come out to be that because it's that would be bad, and that's like the only other thing I can think where it's like what terrible thing might have happened. Yeah, I know everyone kind of like jumped to that. It was like oh well, it has to have been something you know she was you know being bullied on set or like yeah i have to think she was she's ruby rose she's a bit more thick-skinned to like not pay attention to like online hate or anything yeah she's a she's a tough lady and also too like if that was the case i'm sure she would be the first one to be like oh i'm fucking suing you all that (laughs) yeah oh yeah of course (laughs) you would think so because it's like hey you guys got a lot of money I think it was her who hated Vancouver. Yeah, what's up with all these Americans hating Vancouver? Vancouver is nice. Yeah, everything I've seen of it, it looks really nice. 
it's it's lovely. It's a little hippy dippy. It's like I know where I was uh, in Victoria, which is like an island off the coast of Vancouver. There, uh, it's hard to get a good slice of pizza. That is a problem. <laughs> the pizza does suck out there. No chain coffee shops. Everything's mom and pop. But I mean that, that that's more annoying. That's not a deal breaker for me. <laughs> Also, you're rich. Ch- chop her in a good pizza. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, it's, it's very interesting considering we just got the news that season two is happening, but obviously it's yeah, being yeah. pushed back because of this pandemic stuff, which gives them time to yeah. recast. But as well, like, what do you do? <laughs> what exactly? Uh, they uh, Greg Berlanti has spoken up and says they you know we are definitely dedicated to casting another gay woman in this role. And I'm like, OK, well, that's good. Uh, but yeah, how, how do you do it? I mean, I guess, we, you know, she she works behind a red wig and a mask and everything. So, you know, at least her profile won't change that much. But yeah, how do they explain, oh, hey, Kate, you look different now. They should they should have an explosion storyline. Like, oh, no, it was a car bomb and she had to have reconstructive surgery. <laughs> well, oh, the League of Assassins <laughs> came to kill her and she had to change her face. We've got a couple of ways you can do it. You can do like, oh... Crisis aftershocks. There's like, like, uh, uh, like, build something in Flash where where he's like, oh, there's like a, an aftershock of like the the crisis because of all the Earths. There's like too many Earths in Earth One or something, and it changed some stuff. One of them being Kate Kane now looks a little bit well, different. Well, well, how do they explain uh, Brainiac's costume being better? Um, she he, he un- kind of like unlocks all like the parts of him in the memory thanks to crisis so like all Damn. his different parts yeah yeah it, it's kind of built into his character already um didn't uh didn't they introduce hush again i was gonna start watching he's he's a surgeon he changes that's people's the next faces. that's the next one we we just had hush and in the final episode they revealed uh hush is now bruce wayne ah clever and they've cast someone as bruce wayne Oh, I like that. I like that a lot, actually. And again, totally from the comics. Yeah. So, again, you've also got that thing where it's like, if they don't have, if they want to like make it like a reveal, what you could do is you could like refocus the show for like three episodes on like Luke and all of that, and maybe bring that this Bruce character uh, in a little bit more, and then have Kate come back in as a new character. Hmm or something again hey it it sucks they've already exhausted the league of assassins and everything else because that should totally be a thing like oh i had to change my face to go on the run from them yeah well well, she's kind of on the run at the moment now because like the whole thing in season one has been like they've been trying to like find a way to like kill the batwoman and there's like a lucius fox had like a a journal which conveniently had like all the ways to kill them um (laughs) And and Damn that landed in the hand of the crows uh, and and Kate's father. Um, Interesting. So he's got something that could p- possibly kill uh, Batwoman. So yeah, you could lead something like oh she's got to change her identity up. And there's also there was also like a a very brief thing where other people were dressing up as as Batwoman when she stopped mm-hmm. being it after she killed someone right oh by accident or by purpose on purpose but it was good because it made her actually learn like hey i need to actually start you know doing this hero thing properly and because batwoman has killed people in the comics yeah. before <laughs> she is a soldier she is not bruce wayne that's the no kill rule is really more bruce's hang up than anything in fact in that great detective comics run we liked so much mm-hmm. What are, uh, what are some places they could go that, too? I'm trying to think, you know, was was the Golden Age Batwoman different? Can they, like, maybe play around with that where it's like, oh, you know, it's still it's still Batwoman, but it's a different Batwoman? Yeah, I, I, I could see maybe, like, they open the season with, oh, Batwoman is missing, like, kind of like how they went with Bruce. And then, yeah. and then have um, people, like, they've obviously just uh, brought back her sister um right. who thanks to crisis who then went away because of crisis she kind of because there was two <laughs> alices and they kind of like canceled each other out so you could always have alice maybe take up the mantle which would make which would be actually pretty funny because the actress who plays her was in birds of prey oh wow um so yeah that that would be pretty funny but then you could also have she- her ex girlfriend the one who she was in the army with uh who's part of the crows now kind of take up that mantle oh yeah did uh did they ever uh get alice into a better costume that looked more like her comic counterpart not really no she's still like that sort of like trashy hippie sort of look. oh missed opportunity yeah missed opportunity oh well 
Yeah, I'll, I'll have to catch up on Batwoman and tell you what I think, especially because I think Legends only has a few more episodes mm-hmm. left and Flash is already done for the season. I tell you what, it got it got better after Crisis. Like, that, 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 that Crisis shift really helped the show. Yeah, that, uh, that seems to be, uh, what is it, par for the course for a lot of these shows. Mm-hmm. All right, what else do we got going on here? Oh, Keeping with the CW stint here, again, uh, Berlanti was talking, you know, in a bigger interview this week, and he said, hey, Legends of Tomorrow won't be ruling out uh, Swamp Thing potentially showing up, because obviously Swamp Thing will be airing on the CW, and shit, we talked about this last week, Matt, and I feel like we wished this into existence. I was just about to say, yeah, he heard us, and they're like, hey, that's a good idea, we're gonna take that. (laughs) He heard us through the ether again, we're gonna do the Everyone Gets Stoned with Swamp Thing episode. Yeah. It's going to be a big deal. We're going to have the green Anton Arcane and the, what is it? The Rod are going to be villains for a yeah. season. And then the, Legend the would totally that do that. Time. Legends would totally do that. Like, let's get high with Swamp Thing. They would totally do that. Oh, absolutely. And it would be fun. It would be funny. Where is Legends going to go? Because, again, you know, Legends always surprises me with its villains. Like, okay, we've done, like, a big uh, demon in Moloch. We did, a, we did a villain. We did Necron, who was, you know, basically like uh, the devil or a devil. And then here we're doing the friggin' fates. We're doing the three fates, the Greek gods, which is pretty clever. And, again, none of this is really from the comics, so they're kind of making it up as they go along, which is interesting. Yeah, I would, I'd like them to, like, kind of stray away from the magic and go back to, like, more traditional traditional like comic book villains Science like fiction. like your vandal savages and stuff and right, right. and like more more stuff with like time travel because it time travel for the show hasn't really been like a big part of it even though that's no. kind of what it is no like history's greatest hits just kind of show up everywhere now and yeah. you're right it's not about we need to go to x they just kind of use time travel to get from place to place yeah so maybe just refocus the show on that I don't know how you would do that because it's like you would need another fetch quest. You would need like another thing. We well, see what you, here's what you do. You you you, open, you you blow open the show and say okay. So in, as well as time traveling, the wave rider can now go to into the multiverse. So mm, so you can go to all these different right. worlds and visit them. You stay away from worlds I like like. That earth 2 where star girl is taking place and all that um or maybe I, you don't for a crossover again, again yeah I, again then you can you can bring in swamp thing and go to his earth um you can also maybe get brandon ralph back in the superman kingdom come outfit for an episode that would be pretty great uh, again speaking of brandon ralph i've been pitching this idea forever uh what is it steel from a bad story from the comics but make it good steal the whole who is monarch storyline being like oh yeah there's this uh, bad guy in the future who's cr- uh, conquered the whole world and his name is monarch and oh we think he's using tech like from the wave rider to help him take over to change history we need to stop him who's monarch and then like halfway through you're like oh monarch was a legend who was he <laughs> yeah oh it's right because he <laughs> It's Ray because as we do the thing in the comics with the thing like it was supposed to be Falcon, but it was only Falcon because <laughs> fans found out that it was Ray. So there you go. <laughs> Come on, Legends writer room, friggin' friggin' let me in on this one. And then again, you can be like, oh, we need to go to points in history that he changed things to help himself. Yeah, yeah, do stuff like that. I'd also like to see uh, Nate get a little bit more time because he's no. kind of like like. She's regressed. Just regressed to like a side character who's like comedic and all that. Whereas, like, no, this guy's actually pretty smart. You know, he's a, he's a history professor. He, he's, he's Indiana Jones who can turn into metal. And that doesn't get enough play. When he remembers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when he remembers he has powers. <laughs> And he remembers he can turn into metal. Also, too, I think, you know, we should get some more people on the ship, too. Like, the cast is pretty good right now, but you could probably sub some people out for someone new. Yeah, I, as much as I like the character, I think Mick maybe should leave to go spend time with his daughter mm. and maybe get someone else in. It is one of those absence makes the heart grow fonder situation. Also, love Constantine, too, but he can't be there forever, even mm. though this last season has really been fucking built around Constantine. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it looks like maybe Astra will be joining the team mm-hmm. and taking his place as kind of like the, you know, harder edged one. So she could fill like the Mick role and fill the uh, Constantine role. Yep. That would definitely be interesting. Uh, again, I love Charlie to death, too, and I would hate to see her go, especially because they breathe fresh life into her character like twice by having her change who she was playing. I'd like to but see her like come after- back as Vixen. That would be fun. Just out of the blue, like, hey, I'm back as Vixen. Yeah. <laughs> 
Or just have the two characters meet. That would be funny. Yeah. Where it's, hey, you look like me. Hey, you look like <laughs> me. Because it's like, after this fate stuff, it's like, okay, where do you go with Charlie? Because you've, like, technically three times you've breathed fresh life into her character. From being Vixen being done, to being the shape-shifting punk Charlie, to, oh, now I'm actually Clotho of the fate. So she's actually <laughs> been three characters. Yeah, who's she going to be next season? <laughs> exactly. Like, again, how do you change her up again? <laughs> Shit, even, uh, what is it, uh, friggin' uh, Isis there, which, yeah, they don't call her Isis, obviously, for natural reasons, but that's who she's supposed to be. They breathe fresh life into her by letting her play two radically different versions of the same yeah, character. Yeah, I've really loved her character arc this last season. It's been great. Same. Amazing. <laughs> The someone bringing up Rip Hunter there. Yeah, that's right. The character none of us remember. Remember when he was the main character and the show got great when he left? <laughs> I, I, I'd like to see him brought back and put into this version of the show just to see what would like what would be different. Like he could always just be like, I guess you could uh, you could uh, say that like White Canary and all that is kind of like the straight man of the of the group. But it'd be cool mm-hmm. to have like Rip Hunter be there and be, just realize like how ridiculous all of this is it you know rip was funny because they made him a bad guy and he was better than he was as a good guy then they made him a silly director and he was better than he ever was Mm -hmm. what they need to do is like oh there's another version of rip hunter in the multiverse with like the different more serious version of the (laughs) legends like this is what they could have become yeah this is like if season one was very popular and we followed that (laughs) Oh, man, dude, that's a fucking episode right there. Oh, my God, that is an <laughs> episode. The legends run into their more serious counterparts. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> oh, and you get Stein and Firestorm and, like, Captain Cold back for an episode. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, we wouldn't gel with this funnier show. No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> really, you guys uh, got more popular <laughs> when you got funny and stopped giving a shit. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's good stuff. Hey, you know, someone someone put us in touch with the Legends writer's room. <laughs> Man, if there was any show where it's like, hey, visit the writer's room for a day, this is the show I'd want to visit. Because, like, literally, how, how did you guys make this work? Yeah, well, we just sort of, like, thought, ah, oh, this would be fun and just did it. <laughs> this ju- is the most insane did. thing we could just do in a comic book show. <laughs> It really seems like that. Yeah, the chat's right, too. Booster Gold, of all the DC characters they've tried to bring in, and they really haven't tried to bring in many DC characters over the last two seasons. Why Why have they not tried to do Booster Gold at any point? Is he Is he part of, like, a... Is he under, like, um... What is it? Like, embargo? embargo. <laughs> do they want him for a movie or something? I mean, they don't seem to be writing him in anything. Yeah, I know. That's the strange thing. I mean, they kind of wrote themselves into a corner by changing Rip's history to where Booster Gold isn't his father anymore. Yeah, well, the, the, you can argue that Crisis maybe fixed that. There you go. Crisis fixed up. We need to go find my father, Booster Gold. Yeah, this is Booster Gold, the father of Rip Hunter. He's much cooler than his son. <laughs> yeah, really, and funny too. And again, he's basically the legends are a bunch of booster golds anyway. We yeah. suck, but we use time travel to overcome our problems. Yes, yeah, yeah. And they have a skeets in that of Gideon. They literally have a skeet. Man, was that last episode not great where the actress who voices her got to show up again? I like when she gets to show up. Me too. And it's just like, oh, is she going to actually interact? No, no, I'm just a figment of your imagination. <laughs> Oh, that was fun. I really liked that one. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so there's your Legends news, everyone. We could we could talk about this shit forever and how that show totally found its footing later on. Yeah. But uh, hey, we're not moving too far from CW, and I know the chat wanted to hear our thoughts on this one. Uh, Stargirl aired this week, Matt. First on, uh, what is it, the DC Universe app, then eventually on the CW with 10 minutes cut. I don't know what 10 minutes they cut. I never watched well, I th- that version. I think it's 10 minutes in the first two episodes. Uh, oh, so all together. Yeah, so really it's like five five minutes in each episode, which when watching the episode, I'm like, oh, I could see where they would make cuts. Yeah, don't th- I think they drop like one F-bomb. I think so, yeah. They drop like one F-bomb, but by and large, no, it's a pretty clean going show. But man, I don't know what I was expecting with Stargirl, but this show knocked my fucking socks off. It was fucking awesome. I expect nothing less from Jeff Johns again and like very like it, it did my heart good to see his name all over this like produced by jeff johns you know based on the characters by jeff johns and I'm like good for you man you deserve this because clearly the story is so important to him because if you don't know 
Courtney from the show is named after his deceased sister, Courtney. Yeah, Jones. there's even a picture in the episode where the 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 character of Courtney is sitting with a picture of Jeff's sister. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh, that's cool. But yeah, so like right off the bat, you can see that this is not your regular CW show that they put like DC Universe money into this. They put Doom Patrol money into this because you get the the final stand of the JSA as they are killed uh, by their arch rivals made of some pretty big uh, bad guy names, but bad guy names of the golden age that you don't remember anymore, like Brainwave and The Magician. Yeah, and Sportsmaster and Solomon Grundy. Who's lo- who's never looked better in live action. Yeah, looks so damn good. Icicle, which that's going to confuse people too. They're like, wait, Icicle? You mean like uh, Caitlin from The Flash's <laughs> dad? It, yes, but no, but it's yeah, a It's thing. different universes, different Earths. They set this which up in ma- Crisis. <laughs> They did, actually, which, again, actually makes a lot of sense. And, again, we see, uh, what is it? We see uh, Jay Garrick's uh, helmet there all smashed up and everything, and we see Wildcat and everyone else. One thing I really liked about that Jay Garrick thing is uh, later in the show, um, Courtney finds a picture of the JSA. And yes. out of all of the all of the characters there, Jay Garrick's face is uh, obscured. Mm, so it, it could obscure. possibly be end up being like the John Wesley ship um flash or or like a different flash they could have him in the show that would be really cool if they ended that picture is great too because that picture is totally like alex ross oh yeah totally it's a total alex ross thing we got everyone we got hawkman there we got uh the flash and dr midnight and our man and everyone else and i'm like oh this is so cool all these golden age heroes i love it yeah and and yeah as you're saying that opening like fight was just so damn cool and again, I, I remember that they cast Joel McHale as the original Starman, but then when I saw him, I still laughed. I'm like, oh, look, it's Joel McHale. Yeah, yeah, I didn't actually hate him in the role. He kind of fit it really no. well. No, I mean, it helped that he died, like, in the first five <laughs> yeah, minutes. Yeah, but I have know. a feeling casting someone like him, he's going to appear in, like, flashbacks oh, yeah. and stuff. Also, hats fucking off to Luke Wilson on this one. He He's kind of perfect for this oh, role yeah. because he's got... He's got that perfect mixture of, like, genuineness and, like, childish optimism, which makes sense because he's, a, like, a kid sidekick, but he's, like, older than the person he was a sidekick for. Yeah. And also, and also like, you know, this kind of, like, you know, o- like, older believability and everything to him. Like, he does, like, the oh shucks Jiminy Jillikers, but it makes sense for him. Yeah, he, he was fantastic in this episode. I loved watching him as just, like, this... A dad that's just trying to do his best and and mm-hmm. as well as being like the the sidekick who who realizes he is a sidekick and oh yeah it isn't isn't like you know like those other sidekicks that like want to be more or anything he's just happy to be, have been a sidekick yeah he's not mad or resentful no. about it and that's the thing i always liked about stripes or stripey where he's like no i'm a career sidekick it's what i do you know I, the, the heroes need me to prop them up they'd be nothing without me and i'm like oh that's cool and the moment that really sells it is like even when she's giving him shit corn she's like yeah well if you're such a big deal why aren't you in this picture with the js and it's like because i took it <laughs> that's why i'm like oh it's a pretty good comeback actually yeah, yeah. and as well he gets like a six set of armor <laughs> He really does, and I kept thinking to her, it's like, all right, how long are we going to have to wait for him to get in the robot? I bet that's going to be the season finale. He finally puts on the robot suit to help her. Oh, shit, he did it at the end of episode one. Yeah, yeah, and I like that it changes into the car as well. That's really fucking cool. He's he's the ultimate boomer dad who loves his old car too much. <laughs> My car is literally armor. It protects me in the suburban jungle. <laughs> The, uh, the high school drama stuff looks interesting, too, because uh, we see that, like, uh, apparently everyone in this small town is a former supervillain. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I actually really, it's really funny because, like, I didn't pick up on the brainwave stuff until it was revealed. But, like, before that, you're like, something's off with this town. Like, it's, it's like, way too, like, nice. <laughs> It's, it's pleasant, Phil. And that's like, hey, why is this uh, Asian lady gym coach giving her so much shit? And I'm like, oh, because that's Tigress. That's why. Yeah, yeah. Then you start realizing, oh, shit, the, all of these are like the Injustice Society. And it's all run by Brainwave. To which, again, to it's like, hey, wait a minute. We got Tigress and we got Sportsmaster in the show. Oh, that girl, we only see the back of her head for a couple minutes. That's Artemis. <laughs> 
Which, again, if Artemis is in the show, that might mean Cheshire could be in the show, too. Who knows? Yeah, well, yeah who, who knows? But, yeah, it's it's off to a very, very great start. And I think the next episode's sure is. tonight or tomorrow. Monday. Yeah, I'm not sure when they release the episodes, whether it's midnight or whatnot. Yeah, it, uh, it airs Monday and uh, Legends is Tuesday. Yeah. But, yeah, this uh, this show off to a great start. I love what it's laying down. It's, you know got all the great hallmarks of a good superhero origin story and it's going to be so weird to see this show hopefully get big in the same way that like uh doom patrol got big there and we saw a renewed interest in those characters i will love it when comics eventually come back and it's like hey should we call star girl for help maybe star girl <laughs> should be on this team <laughs> that, that, that that would be really great and um the best thing as well is that like obviously it's like a teen drama sort of thing but it mm -hmm. it doesn't like hit you over the head with it or it's not like no cringy or anything it's actually quite it's, believable it's a, <laughs> It's a stealth teen drama is yeah. what it is. They 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 hook you with the superhero stuff and then it's like, <laughs> ah, we got you, we got you for the high school drama. Who's who's gonna ask who to the prom? You don't know, but I bet you yeah. care. Also, we never really talked right. about it, but I love her little brother in this as well. He's like like yeah. he's just like a complete zoomer, like, I'm playing Fortnite because we're designing video games and <laughs> literally checking everyone. I'm making too many marshmallows in the microwave, and I'm like, Yep, that's that's someone's kid they wrote. That's a bunch of writers rooms kids that they all just <laughs> mash together into one character yep <laughs> but again he's fun and actually a good actor and i like the idea that you know courtney's doing the oh i just can't fit in thing is like no i fit in great everywhere i am everyone loves me yeah yeah <laughs> i'm so well adjusted again we uh, we zoomers we bounce back super hard <laughs> Get, get your shit together, you dumb millennial. <laughs> <laughs> zoom, zoom, zoom. <laughs> yeah. Also, like, there's also the um, through line of, like, her sort of discussing who her father might be. She thinks mm. it might be Starman uh, because of yeah. how, like, certain things work out. And uh, do you think we'll get a reveal on that? I think we will. Again, you know, I, I can't even remember who her father is in the comics, actually, if that was the story they told yeah, or where they went with I, that. I can't remember, but I keep thinking, oh, it's going to be revealed to be like a villain brainwave or something. Or, or, something. or something, yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah, who, who, again, that sounds like a very villainous thing to do. Like, oh, yeah, we only ever saw your father like once every year. Yeah. Or maybe there's a reason for that. Maybe he's also a super character. Yeah. Maybe he could be is one of these other JSA members. Is is he an is he the alien star man? Because I know they did an alien version of him, and that would be like a weird way to tie it all together. Yeah. No, not the David Bowie star man. The <laughs> the, the the purple ki uh, purple star man who uh, hung out with uh, Congorilla. Yeah. That would be something where it's uh, where it's like yeah, you know your uh, your dad's not star man, uh, or at least not this version of star man. Yeah, he's he's the one that goes off into space. Yeah, yeah, he's that version. Because there's many different star people. There's uh, Mikhail Thomas, Prince Gavin, Will Payton, David Knight, Jack Knight. Yeah, who's the, so, who's know, the one we got in this show? We got Sylvester Pemberton, didn't we? Yes, yeah, so be sure to uh, keep an eye out for all those other names because those are all other uh, star people. Yeah, I, like the, the, hey, the, hey, the, Chad is asking if you have read it. I have read it, but I haven't read it in many years same i read it when it was new and i'm like oh this is cool i hope they do more with this then they never did more with it <laughs> but but clearly she had a big old fan following because she showed up in multiple episodes of justice league unlimited her and stripes and i feel if anyone knows where that character is from that's uh that's the one yeah and as well as jeff johns is behind this so the guy that basically created the character so shit i think it was like a short mini series too i think it was. it was only like six issues yeah yeah well, back in damn, the early you know, 2000s if, well god damn if i need new comic content and everything fuck it i might <laughs> end up doing that i have just, thought just i had I wanna... thought about doing that i'm like oh star girl's coming out i could do the jeff john series it's actually pretty damn cool and short yes just because i want to remind myself of what the <laughs> fuck happened in it because, yeah, like, it, but man, talk about another character that was, like, super ahead of its time. Like, yeah, young teenage superhero and everything. It's going to be great. Yeah, it's it's definitely great. And it's, it's definitely a step up from her last live action appearance. Uh, which one was that? Uh, she was in the Smallville episode that featured the JSA. That's right. She became the, because in that episode as well, Starman is killed and she becomes the new, the new Starman. <laughs> 
Man, adaptationally, that dude just cannot catch yeah. a fucking and break. And in that episode he? as well, he was killed by Icicle again. <laughs> wow. Uh, I, I think it's actually collected now as JSA Present Stars and Stripe. That's like the okay. newest Amazon collection. Which, shit, that should tell you what DC thinks about it even then. Oh, we can't just sell it as Star Girl. We can't just sell it as Star Girls and Stripe. We need to actually sell it as JSA Presents. Yeah, I am a, I'm really surprised as well that Jeff Johns didn't like hasn't done anything new with the character like you would have thought that like like even after even before shazam he would have done this as like his baby project like yeah huh maybe they beat him down too hard yeah they're like no yeah no one will like this or who's laughing now (laughs) yeah stop stop inserting your own family drama into things (laughs) but Actually, I'm looking here. Okay, so Star Girl by Jeff Johns in a paperback. They actually came out with a new version of it, uh, May nineteenth, twenty twenty. So this is the one they came out for the show. Oh, so yeah, last week. <laughs> yes, and it's actually called Star Girl, is what it's got. I'm like, okay, perfect. Wow, forty five bucks for the paperback. Jesus Christ, Jeez. that's actually that's forty five bucks American too. Does that? I'm guessing that has the whole miniseries and hopefully some other shit. Okay, yeah, it has uh, Stars and Stripes 0 to 14, All Star JSA, DCU Secret Heroes 5. Okay, so literally it's everything written on the character <laughs> in one uh, collection, as it should be. Yeah. Because that's, uh, that's a fucking lot. Oh, yeah, as the chat says too, yeah, we actually also saw Star Girl and the JSA in Legends for a minute. Yeah, for, for like a hot minute. <laughs> then never again. <laughs> Yeah, remember when we thought they were going to be important and then they didn't? Yeah, they just kind of faded away, probably because of this show. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. Well, either way, it's fucking great. And if you've been on the fence about it, you should check it out again. Totally in line with Doom Patrol and Harley and the good DC Universe stuff that they've been doing. Absolutely. Get out of here, Titans. You're not invited. <laughs> Man, to talk about a fucking difference in shows and ideology when you compare that Teen Titans show to Doom Patrol and now to this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Night and fucking day. It's what happens when you get who... comic writers to write these stories. And just like people who care. Like you can tell the people who are writing Titans don't care. It's like, yeah, let's fucking marry Dark Knight Returns to the Marv Wolfman era of comics. Well, those things don't go together. Well, fuck it. We're doing it anyway. <laughs> yeah, fuck Batman. Yeah, and let's, you know, just throw things in willy-nilly that make no sense and just do it because. Because <laughs> fuck you, that's why. Uh, so one last story here, and it's the only Marvel-centric topic we have this week, if you can believe it. Marvel, Marvel's been pretty quiet over the last yeah, little bit. Yeah, but they, but they have just announced, like, a, a hit new movie that's gonna make a now, billion I, dollars. Now, when I say Marvel, I of course mean, uh, Sony Marvel, not Disney Marvel. You have to make yeah. the difference. But yes, the, the Jackpot movie is back on track. And I do mean that back on track because a lot of people on Twitter this week treated it as like, oh, Sony just announced they're doing a Jackpot movie. No, 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 no. They've been working on Jackpot in different forms for a long time. In fact, if you go back and listen to old episodes of this podcast, we talk about it. They, 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 uh, intent on getting this this into uh cinemas and and of course they oh, they yes. hide the the writer of the only jackpot series mark guggenheim because he seems to be the only one to ever even care about this character <laughs> clearly uh jackpot for those of you who don't know is like a one-off villain from like the dan slot era of spider-man who looks like mary jane has a name similar to the thing mary jane said uh, face a tiger you hit the jackpot but she is none of these things no I, I honestly couldn't tell you much about the character because I don't know anything about the character. If memory serves, she was only in one arc and then was never seen again. Yeah, she was in like yeah an arc written by Mark Guggenheim, I think. Um, Amazing. Like a little series of it, yeah. Do you, do you think Guggenheim lied and just said, oh yeah, it's totally Mary Jane, let me make a movie about it and pay me royalties? <laughs> Probably. Yeah, I feel I feel like that was a thing where it's just like, oh yeah, yeah, it was Mary Jane, totally a super. Yeah, her name was Jackpot. Oh yeah, it's great. <laughs> Man, what another Sony ass idea is it? Where it's like, okay, we made Venom and that made a billion dollars. We're making Morbius and that'll make a billion dollars too. What what else do we have in the hopper? What else do we have in the grand pantheon of Spider Man related characters? You know what I find funny? They saw this character and it's like, hmm, her name is Jackpot. So you mean she'll be 
a box office jackpot. Oh well, that makes but total sense. We'll we'll do that. This this is what Avi Arad said, or whoever the fuck is in charge <laughs> of the the suck universe at the moment. <laughs> was it suck? What was it close? We had a whole joke of what sump, it was close to. Sump or oh, something. Spunk. It was close yeah. to spunk. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Yeah, Sony Pictures, uh, Unlimited Marvel, yeah, Spunk. <laughs> yeah, as the chat says, hey, remember Silk? Yeah, if they made a Silk movie, I would kind of respect that. Yeah, hey, she's like Spider-Man, but, you know, she's younger and Asian and isn't that fun. And, you know, she makes 90s references. You can make a fucking movie about that. Yeah, but but where they got off on doing this, I'd love to see, like, an, like, uh, like Sony Emails Leak Part 2 oh please and, ju- and it's just like the shit show like that first lot was where it's like what characters do we have who's who's jackpot i oh, will just do her yeah re- remember they were gonna do like a black cat silver sable buddy picture and that one fell through yeah remember they were talking about doing a aunt may origin movie her in the 60s <laughs> <laughs> what was she up to who gives a fuck <laughs> But who gives a fuck about a jackpot? Hell, the Slingers. You could make something about the Slingers or Cardiac. And I'm like, okay, that's an idea. <laughs> jackpot is nothing. Jackpot isn't an idea. <laughs> jackpot is literally you threw a dart at a board and that's what you came up with. <laughs> or even worse, it's something like Sony's like, okay, you know, we're taking uh, we're taking like pitches from all industry people. And because Guggenheim works in movies and everything, too, as well as comics, he's like, I've got a hit, and I own the rights to it. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you only had to come to me, the writer of, of uh, Green Lantern. Yeah, exactly. I, I got you. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny. You know, we make fun of Green Lantern, yet to think Berlanti and everything else has redeemed themselves, and I'm actually excited for the <laughs> Green Lantern show they're going to be doing. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Also, yeah. Remember that Sinister Six movie they were going to be doing, too? Remember that? Uh, that was going to spin out of Amazing Spider-Man 2. Oh, God. Wah, wah. Jeez. <laughs> Man, uh, my other co-host, Sal, from Comic Pop, he actually sat down and watched Venom for the first time I saw this that, week. And yeah. I, I loved getting to read his tweets on that. I was like, this is fucking terrible. And I could, see, I could basically see the look on his face. <laughs> where i'm like yeah it's like you'll never feel joyful again huh it's like it's barely even a movie (laughs) god our commentary for venom is a hell of a thing because it's hard to even muster anything for that movie because it's like this is this is barely a film this is images on screen but it's it's just nothing it's nothing (laughs) it's just nothing but please come see here there be carnage or lots of carnage 2 or whatever the fuck they ended up calling it (laughs) Let There Be Carnage, there you go. Yeah. That was the one. I knew I'd figure it out eventually. I just had to, you know, punch myself in the head a couple times and think of the dumbest thing I can think of. <laughs> uh, jeez, this, this feels like a bad place to end the show on Jackpot. <laughs> that was the last news story. Yeah. And we talked about comics at the top of the show, so I don't fucking know what else to add to this. Oh, uh, what a fucking Jackpot. <laughs> Cha, what should we add to this, Cha? I don't want to go out on such a such a lame uh, lame note. We need we need something else. We talked about the Snyder Cut. We loved Star Girl. What what else do we got? <laughs> Has anything else happened this week? I don't think so. No, it's been like a small smattering of news every week, just barely yeah. any. I, I, I check comic book resources right now, but it's hard to find any actual news on that website <laughs> anymore because 90% of it is just like, I had a thought today. Yeah, look at this thing we noticed from five years ago. Well, we're just rebringing yeah. them up now because they're, we need fucking content. <laughs> we have no content. <laughs> five things that is and five things that won't. <laughs> Man, like, like we always made fun of comic book resources, but a holy shit, they have gotten way worse. Oh, absolutely, it's awful, and like, it, it, it's it's good as well because of this pandemic. People are starting to pay notice because before, everyone you know go about their life, but now everyone's in lockdown and can see more stuff. Yeah. Like people are like paying attention to it and and calling it out on its shit. <laughs> Here's their top story right now as I look at this. Godzilla 1998, why Zilla was controversial and better than you remember. And it's not a picture from the movie. It's a picture of the cartoon. Oh, God. So, yeah, see, and then you'll click on the article and they'll be talking about the cartoon, not the movie. 
So clearly some writer's like, hey, you know, that cartoon was pretty good. I'd like to write an article about it. Well, find a clickbaity headline and you can do it. Yeah, they, they I think they have like a generator that just generates like a, a, a clickbaity headline. The, 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 there is. You've seen that? The yeah. comic book uh, resources uh, title generator. We should play that game. <laughs> Let's see if we can find it. <laughs> comic book resources a headline generator let's let's play this game well while you play that game i might actually duck our way to the toilet because i've been waiting to go to the toilet for the last hour <laughs> okay let's end the show then matt's matt's gotta go poopy everybody <laughs> so i guess we gotta bring this show to a close but thank there that's a better note than jackpot you taking a dump is better than jackpot <laughs> So thank you, everyone, for coming out and watching and listening. We hope you appreciated the show. Uh, also, if Matt is interested, do we want to talk AEW when you get back? Sure, yeah. Okay, so Matt will end the stream when we're done here live, and then we'll come back and talk about that. If So if you're interested in wrestling, stick around. We'll talk about it. That'll be fun. And if you couldn't make it live, don't worry. We'll put this up on Patreon later. In fact, if you are a patron, uh, you can listen to this show first before anyone else in both audio and digital formats for as little as a dollar a month. Check that one out if you're watching it, on Wednesday. Thank you so much. And you can, you can definitely check it out if Joel remembers to put it up. Yeah, yeah, sometimes <laughs> I don't. It's, uh, days are bleeding into each other. Time time is an illusion. It's a flat circle. Thank you. Thank you for watching, everyone. We hope you enjoyed it. Again, stick around if you're watching live, and me and Matt will be back soonish. So until then, everyone, uh, bye-bye. Bye.